Hi, this is Eric Durack, and welcome to this edition of Med Health Fit, the TV show that integrates wellness and healthcare. And tonight, we are talking about massage therapy, Bowen therapy, lymphatic drainage, and all things therapeutic with Catherine Perrone, a local Santa Barbara massage therapist and therapeutic practitioner for over 30 years, correct? Closer to 40, I'm afraid. Closer to 40. Well, that's mm -hmm. all right. That means you have, you have great experience. I do. And I'm sure the people who take advantage of your services know that. <laughs> so how did, you, how did you find your way to Santa Barbara? Well, I grew, well, I tried to grow up in Ventura County, and I started out as a marine biology major, which ended promptly after going to the islands on a field trip. I came back an English major. So, um, okay. so from there I went from Ventura College, I went to UCSB mm -hmm. and um, did my junior and senior year there. So I stayed. And then you stayed like a of lot course. of people. And then, but, and then you, you weren't an English teacher, so how did, you, how did you get into the whole practice of massage and body work? And well, Okay, I worked for the art department at the time, okay. which was a lot of fun. Some of my best friends are still from uh, UCSB art department. And um, uh, I would come back home just a wreck. Stiff, muscle problems, aches and pains. And I went to the med center a number of times and all they could offer me was Valium. I thought, there's gotta be another way, mm -hmm. you know, other than Valium. Of course, in the 70s, there were plenty of ways, but you know, I, I was a student. I wanted to, you know, um, you know, play it straight. So I also um, was making challah a lot at the time, which was honoring my Jewish, Jewish roots. Jewish egg bread. So I would love do this. I thought, I love this kneading stuff. So I transitioned into massage therapy about a year after graduation. And I just loved it, and I was, you know, kind of good at it, so mm -hmm. stuck with it. Well, fantastic. Now, how you and I met was through Santa Barbara Wellness Directory with our good friend Al Marceline, and and Al and I had a conversation a few months ago about people who I could have on the show, and because I, I would call somebody that I knew and then they'd, they'd cancel or, oh, I can't do it for another six or months. Or they'd make or, an excuse like uh, they were in Berlin. Yeah, they were in Berlin excuse. or something. But, but <laughs> he said, well, why don't you try to look up some people on the Santa Barbara Wellness Directory? And I went through a number of different topics and I saw that there was Bowen therapy. And I had had an interest in Bowen. I had worked with a lot of folks at the university with stretching and whatever. And, and the Bowen therapy is is something that I felt that I would have a pretty good um, uh, success rate if, if, if I did it because I was doing things that were kind of sim similar to it at the university. I had a table in my office. I would stretch. I would do some pressure point. Uh, you know, I would ice people up if they, if they had an injury or something. But um, I thought that the Bowen, and it's B-O-W-E-N, Bowen therapy, mm -hmm. uh, was not like a 5,000-hour massage practice. It was something that sort of augmented it. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you got into the Bowen therapy and, and, and why you think it's such a unique branch of, of massage. Well, Bowen was started a number of years ago in Australia by a guy named Tom Bowen. And he would have up to 13,000 pregnant women a year just to, for this one back move. And so his fame and infamy spread throughout Australia. and subsequently went worldwide. So, um, that's 400 a week, by the way. That's, for, yeah, he would just have them lined up. They called it the pregnant lady move. So, um, this is only pregnant women, but, um, <laughs> okay. So, so Bowen started with specific types of, of clients. And, 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 and you've done Bowen therapy on me, and, and you, you move it sort of, it's like a, a cross friction massage that you it's hold. It's no friction. It's gently challenging the muscle, and then you go over it, so it moves the fascia, and then the muscle goes back into place. So it's kind of like playing an instrument. If your body were a cello, and I plucked you, and the 
the string in a certain way, it would resonate through the body of the instrument, mm -hmm. producing a sound, a vibration. So the same thing for the body. You work on a specific point of the body, um, of the muscle, and roll it, and then it, um, the body starts resetting itself. Mm -hmm. the, the Bowen magic starts happening. Well, one of the interesting things about Bowen, <clears throat> and I didn't know this until I did a couple sessions with you, is that the, um, the, ver the, the, the methodology of Bowen is that you will work on a muscle group like the quadricep. Mm -hmm. You'll work on the thigh muscle, mm -hmm. and you'll work your, I'm not going to call it release, protocol. but you'll, you'll work with the protocol in, in, this, in, in one muscle, and then the same thing on the other muscle on the other side of the body. Mm -hmm. And then you leave. And then I leave. And you do that for a couple else. minutes? Yeah, it's usually about two minutes. <clears throat> and, and, and that's for what? Okay, well, let me just go back a little bit. Basically, there's what you call the basic uh, relaxation moves. So okay. you have to do a certain protocol. It's kind of like baking a pie. You need to put down the crust first, okay? And before you can move on to, let's say, your issue is knee or neck or shoulder, um, you have to do the upper and lower body and the in between uh, those two sections of your mid back there. So it's basic relaxation move one, two, and three. So cervical, okay. thoracic, whatever. Exactly. So, but, but, you, exactly. It, but it's a protocol and you, you pretty much you follow the And part of the protocol is leaving the room. Now what happens when I leave the room is it gives your chance, your body a chance to relax for you to integrate that so that you're not just, like with massage, you're constantly doing stuff. And when I leave the room, I notice the change in your breathing. And when I walk back in the room, I can actually see the pattern of energy moving across the body. Much like when you're driving down a desert highway and you see the heat waves on the highway. Right. Well, it's like an energetic thing. Um, that's clearly visible, that's happening. And you may not recognize it, but you're going into a deep state of relaxation mm -hmm. because it's working on your nervous system to relax it. It also works on the vagus nerve and things start happening. I've had people react in so many different ways, like really moving their bodies a lot or suddenly you know, their leg will jump out mm -hmm. or um, or they'll get a twitch, or um, or they'll just fall asleep. So mm. it's a deep state of relaxation they go into. Well, again, in intuitively, I know that you know you may work on someone's uh, uh, levator scapula muscle, and oh my gosh, it's so painful, and you're mm -hmm. trying to work it mm -hmm. out, and they're uh, mm -hmm. it's very, very, well. Mm -hmm. Let me go work on your feet. So you you know you go to the bottom, and oh, the calf muscles are so tight, and everything is so sore. Blah blah blah. And with the Bowen therapy, you will work on a specific muscle group, mm -hmm. exactly. shoulder on one side, shoulder on the other, mm -hmm. levator scapula, upper neck on one side, levator scapula, upper neck on the other side, and then you leave the room. So I guess perhaps, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the body gets a chance to sort of process that a little mm -hmm. bit exactly. while you're relaxing. And if someone keeps pressing on muscles for an hour and a half, the whole thing about vagal nerve stimulation and the relax and release aspect of massage might not be fully actualized by a person. Exactly. With Bowen, you're trying to do exactly. that component as well. So I get that from, from a standpoint of what makes it uh, different Unique. than massage or physical yes. therapy or something is because normally with PT, I mean, they work on you for a very short period of time because mm -hmm. they got six other patients mm -hmm. that they got to run through the door. Well, what happens is you feel the circulation going. Sometimes it's a sense of warmth or energy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like no other therapy. I mean, you can't really compare it to uh, acupuncture um, or Reiki, you know, but it, it is kind of like all those things combined, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just, it, it's just another modality that's very mm -hmm. unique. Um, in addition to Reiki, you're also a lymphatic pra practitioner, right? Manual so lymphatic drainage. So, so tell us a little bit about uh, manual lymphatic drainage and who you work with that. Well, um, I started doing that a lot of years ago and I was working for a salon in, in Montecito and my first client had was, oh 
Okay, she was severely constipated, I mean, really badly. And let's just say by her second treatment, she had lost eight pounds. So it got her system going. Her system was so overloaded. It wasn't moving. Nothing was moving. And um, uh, the lymphatic system is also your immune system. Right. And, you know, if you have allergies or, um, you know, it, it, it's one thing that really gets uh, taxed when you have cancer. People get lymphedema. I've been called in for um, to work on people who are in the end stages of life with lymphedema, and that's very gratifying work. It, it doesn't last forever, and, but they're at the end of their lives, and it provides them a lot of relief that you can visually see within mm -hmm. 15 minutes. It's like, wow, you know, that really went down. Um, so that's very gratifying work. Well, fantastic. Now, over the last few years, <clears throat> now let, let me, I'll step back about maybe five years ago, I was reading a, uh, an article in a sports medicine magazine and it was talking about the fascia around the knee. And so they had a, they had a picture of a, of, 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 of a knee, probably a, a cadaver dissection, and they were talking about just this, this, this envelopment of fascia, and they started talking about the sort of the, the forgotten tissue in the exactly. body. Because everyone talks about muscle, everyone talks exactly. about cardiovascular, everyone talks about the central nervous system, everyone talks about stuff. But they're saying that, you know, people who have things like in, in this article, they'd mentioned that, you know, a lot of people with chronic low back pain are suffering from torn fascia mm -hmm. that is, is misdiagnosed mm -hmm. and, and not taken care of. So they have this chronic, chronic, chronic condition. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> with the lymphatic system, you actually adhere to dealing with the fascia as well, correct? No, it's more just the lymph, lymph nodes. I mean, uh, okay, Bowen, so what, what, Bowen what, works more with the fascia. Okay, so Bowen, so explain a little bit how that, that works when you're actually doing this, and I'm not gonna call it the rolling technique or the yeah. roller, but it's the technique yeah, that you the, use. Yeah, the moves, the moves. Um, well, when, when you get Bowen done, the fascia starts rehydrating. A lot of times it's dehydrated and, and, and bound up, um, verklempt. How do you say? How do you say? Anyway, um, but when, when when you move it, it starts opening up mm -hmm. so that the energies can move through it better. Mm -hmm. the, the the blood flow, the lymph, the nervous system starts working better. And um, but hydration is is a big part of it, so that um, things can start working again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like clearing off the freeway. You know, if you're driving to LA, you want to get to LA in an hour and 15 minutes. That's not going to happen unless there's no traffic on the freeway. So with Bowen, it's like taking away the blockages, whether that's an adhesion or dehydration or um, you know a muscle spasm. It's going to help open that up so that the energies can flow better. The Im muscle impulse of the nervous system can work better. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of times when I work on people who've had surgeries that their problem was never quite resolved, like a knee surgery, or shoulder surgery. They have a couple Bowen sessions and it's like, oh yeah, you know, now the surgery has accomplished what it was supposed to have done. But it wasn't entirely from the surgery, it was also from the Bowen helping it right. get that last bit of movement that they needed. Yeah. Is, do you think that, I mean, you, you can compare lymphatic, massage, Bowen, can you, is, is Bowen therapy sort of maybe the future of massage in, in some aspects because um, it's, it's looking at massage from this uh, re relaxation standpoint and healing standpoint and fascial standpoint that sometimes general massage doesn't do. Well, yeah, and you, you can be more specific with Bowen too. You work on a certain protocol, you know, whether it's for frozen shoulder or TMJ or migraines. I've, I've had a number of, of people come to me that have had injuries, that they have chronic lasting pain, and after 
a few Bowen sessions, their degree of pain is, is so much less. Um, I have a number of young people that come to me, you know, with a menstrual issues or uh, migraines or anxiety. Mm -hmm. They're much calmer afterwards. It's really very gratifying. Mm -hmm. I've even worked on dogs, and uh, I, I once saw my my little pug uh, limping around, and I thought, oh, whatever's wrong with her looks really expensive. <laughs> you know? So I did Bowen on her, mm -hmm. and she popped right up out of bed. I went, Oh, well, there's a satisfied customer. Anyway, it, it's pretty amazing. Well, well, you and I have spoken about, uh, before we, we went on air, about Dr. Gloria Kay, who uh, has adore. not been on my, my show, Gloria. but I've known her for, for 30 all, years. Yeah, I mean, I've known her Gloria. since, you know, long before the athletic club days and such. And, and Gloria, you know, th there are some people who have a, a clear distrust for spiritual healing. They mm -hmm. think it's a bunch of, you know, mm -hmm. shenanigans. Mm -hmm. And Gloria told me once that one of her clients was a racehorse from Europe and that mm -hmm. she had gone there and she spent some time with this horse that was gonna, going to be not put down, but was going to stop racing mm -hmm. because people really didn't understand, you know, like how much more cortisone can we give it? How many more, how much more but or drugs can we give it? And she said, well, let me spend a couple of days with the horse and worked on the legs and whatever and, and did her thing. And the horse basically healed. And she told me of some other animals she worked with too. And I always feel that any therapy that you do, that you can do with an animal. That's not mm -hmm. a drug because you can do a placebo. There's a whole it's, equine Bowen right, protocol ex too. And, and exactly, is that if you can do it with an animal that has mm -hmm. no idea what you're doing to them, mm -hmm. th and, and you see a success, then that is its own control from a scientific standpoint. So exactly. I think that the efficacy of these types of modalities speaks to itself through the whole animal healing process. Mm -hmm. If you can do Reiki work with an animal and the animal gets better, Clearly, there's a level of success here because some exactly. people will say, "Well, I think I'm better." Well, then there's there's a that's mm -hmm. that's something else. But animals don't think like no, that. they're they're not going to say thank you very much. I'll right? Give you a call. They say, "Where's oh. my next meal?" That's what yeah, they say. exactly. Wag that tail. Walk me already. Well, well, so the other thing that you and I have have spoken about in, in in our last few conversations that you are a big fan, proponent, and purveyor of aromatherapy, and I see aromatherapy as another really big area of medicine and healing mm -hmm. because again before the before the show you and I talked about my oh it's called the bomb that's what it is the it, bomb, it, the, the bomb. <gasps> my son's oh, my, my son goodness. gave me a present for christmas yeah. and it was this uh, very expensive nordstrom's men's cologne and it was called it's called the bomb and it's it smells fantastic it's a wonderful very expensive thing but but it's it's this it's this chemical insult to the it body is, and you know you, you've said yourself you've walked yeah. into Macy's and had to gag overload and aromatherapy gives us the benefits of something that smells wonderful whether it's lemon part, yeah. or lavender yeah, or peppermint great, wintergreen but, I have a wintergreen yeah. one that I use too I smell like candy really? oh, yeah. oh my god that's so medicinal well, well it's not medicinal I mean I have the medicinal ones like the breathing one that I, I use on, on, under my nose yeah. on my chin and stuff so I can actually feel it's like a little bit of a menthol in there or something. Well, the, the purpose, the, initially the whole thing with aromatherapy is that you're going to take a deep breath in and especially Americans, we're not trained to breathe very well. We breathe from about here up rather than right. our full lung capacity. So with aromatherapy, you're going to take a deep breath in. So that's part of the therapy, you know. I use the oils internally as well and externally and I've had such great success with it. My, my two boys have been brought up with aromatherapy and how do you use it internally can you drink it well you know you can put like peppermint oil in water but you want to put it into your glass not plastic because it'll actually dissolve the plastic mm -hmm. so you don't be drinking pvc there you know you you'll go. see your glass is etched Ooh. so you want to put it in glass but you know one mm -hmm. or two drops it's great for your digestion it stimulates digestion you sometimes belch afterwards it got me through my pregnancy so um uh it's very, also very cooling if you're overheating. It's, it's a great thing for nausea, mm -hmm. car sickness. Um. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, aromatherapy will, will have some sort of, and I think it does. I think there are a couple of companies, I know doTERRA 
and a couple of these young uh, companies living. are. are y I young brought Young Living to Santa Barbara like 20, 28 years ago. So you were sort so of I knew the Gary Young. You were yeah. the forefront of that company. Yeah, yeah. And I'm also um, uh, a certified aromatherapist, so I've done a lot of training with international people. Um, and I've made a lot of formulas for particularly women's medicine. I always found there's got to be another way to to do this, you know, either you know even vaginally using the essential oils for things like precancer. Well, what do you do if you're precancerous? You know, I've, I've had women come to me just you know tears like I had a really bad pap smear. What do I do? What do I do? And I go, well, you can be proactive. You know, is that we can? What, that's what you can do. And I can make up a little blend with a few different oils. I charge them very little and I tell them how to use it and um, I've gotten a hundred percent great results. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, women with, you know, um, strep, prepartum or postpartum uh, pregnancies, they want to give you antibiotics. That antibiotic is going to go right through you into your baby. Right. And then that baby's going to end up with a terrible diaper rash as my son did the one time I did antibiotics while nursing. And I, I would, you know, obviously I'm never going to do that again, but I passed it. Um, but, um, you know, I like, I like educating women and show them that there's another way of doing medicine that is very um, effective and fulfilling and extremely inexpensive. Mm -hmm. I have a full line of essential oils, probably a hundred different oils. I showed you my cabinet, right, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think that's so fulfilling, um, you know, using it for your medicine. You know, my, my son once took a picture and he showed me this big pile of all these bottles. I thought, what was this, a party that you had? And he goes, no, Mom, these are all the remedies you've sent me over the years, you know, while he was at uh, in college. And, um, and a lot of them were essential oils, but he knows how to use them, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so they know how to, t it's knowing how to take care of yourself without running to the doctor and playing into the whole medicine thing, which, you know, has its side effects. Right, and, and I, I think that part of the question I had on aromatherapy and just and Bowen in general is that I think that we are at a, uh, as Malcolm Gladwell says, we're at a tipping point here in the United States with our medical system in that we're getting certain medicines forced on us through vaccine programs, mm -hmm. we're getting these massive issues right now with antibiotics, not just with us, but the food we're eating because they're injecting the animals with antibiotics, mm -hmm. and and that to me is is ludicrous. And now we've got this this national opioid crisis, which is going to get worse before it gets better, mm -hmm. because I read something on on Mercola.com a few months ago that the company that that was competing against uh, Purdue Pharmaceuticals, who makes Opioids, one of the big Johnson opioids. And Johnson's Johnson Johnson and Johnson yeah. as well too. But they 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 came out with a um, uh, an opioid medicine for emergency rooms, which is a hundred times more powerful than fentanyl. And I'm like, okay, well, this is already killing fifty, sixty thousand people a year. And essentially, they're like, oh no, it's only going to be for emergency rooms. They're only going to be using it like a My gram God. at a time, etc. Because you could overdose on this with three grams. I mean, you could yeah. over, you know, a drop on the skin. So anyway. The, <laughs> I just, you know, I shake my head that we have all of these these medications coming out, and and then the, the Food and Drug Administration says, well, you can't claim that you heal anyone. Mm -hmm. And of course, I would make that distinction here on the TV shows. You're not claiming that you've cured anyone from a disease, but you may have actually sort of prevented it from happening in the first place. Yeah, but they don't have it anymore. <laughs> well, but but, yeah. but 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 the thing is, is with the, with aromatherapy and the essential oils, is that this was the healing modalities long before Western medicine exactly. came out with, with you know, mm -hmm. synthetic or um, petroleum-based pharmaceuticals. And I think that there are a lot of people right now who are getting back to that method of healing, of self-relaxation, mm -hmm. et cetera. And that's why I think that aromatherapy is, is so important. Not, not that a, you know, my son's cologne was not fantastic cologne. I'm saying that in the long run, it probably may be doing me more harm mm -hmm. than good. And, and you, how it was produced and all that stuff. Yeah, and we don't know that. And like I say, I think that, that these companies spend a lot of money. I know that Gloria Vanderbilt just passed away a few weeks ago, and she was a really big person in that whole mindset of clothing and, and perfumes and mm -hmm. colognes and, mm -hmm. and all of that 
in terms of the, the health and beauty industry. And I really think that, that aromatherapy is, was at the forefront of health and beauty, or just health in general, back in the day. Well, so. and a lot of the perfumes were initially natural ingredients, mm -hmm. and, but then they've synthesized. Right. They, they, they can synthesize lavender. They can turn it into like the Disneyfication of lavender by making it smell more like lavender right. than lavender normally is, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's run amok. Well, and, and like I say, I'm, I'm hoping that more and more people are thinking about the health ramifications or repercussions of using something like a cologne or, or mm -hmm. perfume mm -hmm. all the time, day after day after day, um, and, and how it may affect their health. And people around them as and, well. And around them yeah. too, because hey, we, we know about secondhand smoke. Yeah. I remember my daughter walked into a, a, a clothing store one time and all of the women who worked there were just slathered in, in perfumes. And we were asking for someone, they weren't there, so we walked out and, and you know, my daughter was probably 11 at the time. She said, she said something to the effect of how, how terrible it smelled in there. And I said, don't say anything. You know, those people are, you know, they don't understand this. And, but she really hit her. It's like, this doesn't smell well. Well, and the clothing industry also is one of the most toxic industries yeah. right now in the world. I actually got deathly ill from a T-shirt, mm -hmm. you know, from all the formaldehyde in it, mm -hmm. you know. And so I used my aromatherapy. I did a lot of things because I got really sick from it. But um, I've used the oils on, on even... Well, you have to breathe, right? You just have to breathe. That's mm -hmm. just a given. Right. So there's one way you can use the oils just by diffusing a, th a therapeutic diffuser, not not one of the fluffy ones. And I have one of those, yes. Yeah, but but one that's a nebulizer. Mm -hmm. Actually puts the oils out, not just in a puff of, of water and stuff like that. Right. I talk about a nebulizer that is on a timer. And I had... Um, like a condition of mold or something in my lungs and I had a chronic cough every morning. I'm so used to it. I thought it was just normal mm -hmm. that I coughed every morning. I thought, I'm not a smoker. Why am I coughing? Well, I had a blood test, showed mold, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, do what you know. I started diffusing the oils mm -hmm. and within a month I had completely stopped coughing. And that was... And a really simple blend of oils, inexpensive. Right. And, and, and I think we'll have to probably have you on again to talk about oils because we're running out of time oh, here. I want to make sure that we're good. And uh, so Catherine Perron uh, for MedHealth Fit, thanks for coming on. Oh I think that the bone therapy is, is interesting and we'll do more work Very with myself. Work. So for MedHealth Fit, this is Eric Durack. Uh, thanks for watching. And Catherine, thank you for being on the show and hopefully we'll have you on again me. soon. Okay. And you, you were fine. All right, take care. We'll see you later. Thank you.